So I'm currently building a Seraphon um, uh, Slan Star Master, and I'm having a great time. It's the most enjoyable Games Workshop figure that I've done in a very, very long time, and uh, it's got me all fired up. So uh, I think my Silver Neth army is going to be put on hold for a while because uh, I've got a, a hankering to do more, especially if they're as fun as uh, the big frog guy. Um, uh, also, we've just recently on our Hammer Horrors podcast discussed 1 million years BC, so I've got a hankering to build a dinosaur as well. So here we go, we're combining the two. So I was down in my, my nearest um, independent gaming shop, um, the Consulting Gamer. I usually mention Chaos Cards because that's, that's you know, 15 miles away, um, and that's where we go and play games and that. It's a big, sprawling shop. Consulting Gamer's about a mile away, but it's much smaller. But anyway, I was in there um, and uh, saw this, and that is cheaper than normal, so uh, got to have it. So uh, this is going to be an unboxing, and I think I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to get the old blade out. Let's have a look. It's a very small box. I don't know how big this is. Um, that's the other thing with Celophon is... Um, I remember the old white metal ones, but the new generation, these latest ones, I, I've, I've never seen them in the flesh stroke plastic before. So this is what you get. And I think I said on the, on the other video for the Star Master, what puts me off about doing these is the way they've sculpted the mouths. It looks like they're laughing. So that is a painting challenge to try and... Uh, play down that whole Joker's Grin affair. Looking forward to doing that, guy. I'm, n I'm not doing any of these colours at all. This is not the way I'm going to go, all right? Uh, all right, let's open her up. See what we've got. It's a very thin box. It's got to have at least, what? It must have two sprues, maybe three. One sprue. Hang on. Yeah, one sprue. No wonder it's thin. That fella and dinosaur are all on one sprue. So I'm, I'm stunned by that. Uh, and he's an okay size as well. There's his body. There's a back leg. Oh, I, I wasn't expecting it to be a one sprue jobby, and I guess that's the guy there. That's the rider there. Oh, okay. <laughs> no wonder it's a small box. Any toenails to be attached? Well, two toes. Don't do it. Needless. I don't want the challenger sticking two toes on a foot. It would be nice if uh, you had a, uh, a mouth open or close option. I mean, if, if I can't do anything with this and it does look like he's laughing his head off, I think the next dinosaur, I'm going to have to cut the lower jaw off and, and reposition it and get some milliput. It's all quite involved for a one sprue jobby. Here's your multiple options. That means... Multi-choice. That's basically his headgear. All right. Well, let's start snipping off the sprue and decide uh, what I'm going to do. Almost rhymed. Yeah, so he's, he's quite smaller than I thought he would be. Not as fiddly as I thought he was going to be. Yeah, I had to stick toes on uh, where I really didn't need to. Uh, fair enough with the claws because uh, there's no way that you could cast all that in one go to have the the claws in on themselves like that. So, but that's really good. Um, I haven't stuck him to the base because um, if I stick him to the base, I can't paint paint his underside properly. So uh, yeah, he's nearly ready for primer. But 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 the 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 stages will say 
to paint him all, all once assembled and I'm not going to do that because if I do that I can't get in there to the saddle or any of that bit round the uh, the upper part of the legs um, and I can't do I can't do a proper sub assembly because look what you have to do is you get half of his body right and you stick the tail through that bit and attach him on there and then you get the other half of his body and join him on so he's glued in place i can't paint him separately and then plop him on because these two halves have to glue together after this half has gone and threaded itself in so what i've done is i've there he is minus the shield which i'll be painting separately but he's actually blue tacked together you see that seam line down the middle he has a chest plate thing somewhere in here here which will cover that all right so basically i, I i've uh, he's held together with blue tack and uh, i'll keep him on his rod like this for all the painting but then uh once all the painting's done i've got to take off his head which is blue tacked in place split him down the middle and then put him on so it's not the most conventional way of of painting a figure but uh uh, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I, I'll be just deciding what to do with the dinosaurs in this Seraphon army, and I can go one or two ways. I can go on muted colours, um, a la, you know, Jurassic Park, or I can go more uh, fantastic, colourful. But I'm thinking with all the gold and the colours of the riders, um, it might be a bit too much. Um, third way is a compromise and some sort of a halfway mark. I, I'll see. Uh, let, let's see how we get on. So what I've done is uh, sprayed it in grey primer and then white primer. And this is a very watered down um, skeleton hoard contrast paint. All right. And then over the top of that, all over, I've uh, drive brushed uh, Vallejo, Vallejo Ivory. Can't really see it, but it is in places quite bright. That's because it's pretty much going to be all contrast paints. Um, something I didn't say last time and was very nifty, this tongue in here, uh, the head affair is two halves and sandwiched between the two halves are these top spines and the tongue. It's a fantastic bit of engineering, uh, uh, really good fun. Um, so yeah, just uh, ready for the next step on him. Um, the more I think about it, the more I see that you know going this blue route for a lot of the a lot of the uh, characters in this army it is necessary because if you go any other color, um, they're all going to like just merge together. You need something distinctive. So I'm I'm copying what I did with the skinks and. Uh, so we're starting off with this light blue. All right. Um, I'm going to dry brush it a bit. I'm really seeing that seam line. Hopefully it's not going to be a problem once everything's glued together. So that's him. And then the other thing is his shield. What I want to do, all I, I said on the um, Star Master video, that fellow there actually, um, you know, I'm not going to have any uh, anything wooden in this army. All right, if there's going to be anything like, you know, a, a spear pole or whatever, it's going to be black. It's going to be made out of like obsidian or something like that. Everything's stone and gold and brass and copper. And because of that, I'm not doing everything one color gold like here. You know, I want different ones. So, yeah, this is more of a brass color for the back of his shield. So I've just got to wash that. I'm going to pick those those jewels out. They're going to be jewels for me. He is a Mr. Fancy Pants. So, uh He's going to be very, very bright. All his uh, armor is going to be gold. His headdress is going to be gold. They're going to be real feathers on the back. He is Mr. Fancy Pants. And because of that, because he's going to be so bright, I think I've got to be more subdued with that fella. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, get the contrast paint uh, Mantis Warrior green and watered it down like three parts contrast of two parts water and uh, and I washed it on 
about halfway down the body as you can see and while it was still wet I got a, a cotton bud and just dabbed it off all right and also put it down in his feet and his claws um, and then what I then did was use uh, uh, once that was dry and it gave me that yellowy color I then started from the top work back down again uh, with the same color but this time um, not as strongly diluted and dabbed it down almost at the bottom um, except up the top um, I left that on a bit stronger as you can see uh, I barely touched anything on the bottom of the jaw and then finally went in it in with it neat along the top about a third of the way down and again just dabbed it off almost to the line of the, the scale line there which has given me this uh, quite nice uh, greeny effect so uh, I'm liking that I think what I'm going to do now is along the top there put more one more color which is Vallejo black green all the, the way along the top and uh, dab it off with a cotton bud again so I'm thinking that so I'm thinking the top half is a bit too green so I've just picked that out in an orange and I'm going to lighten that up put some uh, Brightland flesh tone in his eye socket and in his mouth again trying to get away from that smile all right um, and I'm starting to block in metals and I'll explain why shortly and then on this chap he's got his scales on I've just got to dry brush them a bit and you can see I'm starting to do his armor so uh, yeah come along nicely I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the, the the orange on green on this fella Okay, so uh, <clears throat> all the golds, apart from up on his chin, which I've forgotten about, uh, I've painted in Retributor armour, is that how you say it? And washed it with um, Agrax Earth Shade. Now I'm going to pick them out in lighter golds. Uh, the seat is uh, a silver, and that's because, as I said on my other Seraphon video, um, anything that would be wood... Or anything like that that's not gold um, is going to be like uh, obsidian it's going to be like black metal so that's silver and I'll be putting black uh, contrast over that and ditto with his armor that's the retribution or whatever it's called armor washed in agrax earth shade just going along now and I'll start uh, um, lightening them up He's looking at you, you know. Um, quite a advancement with the uh, straps underneath done. I can glue him to the base. And uh, yeah, I'm just starting to pick out the the jewels. Um, I like this turquoise colour. I had it on my uh, Star Master and my army jewellery. It's mainly going to be like this turquoise or red. All right, we've got it up here on his uh, banner. And as you can see, I've started on feathers. Um, this was something uh, I tried that I haven't done before. Basically, uh, three contrast paints, yellow, green, and um, the green that I do on the, the skinks, the darkish green. What I did was I painted three bands separate from each other with a, um, just a band of uh, uh, unpainted white primer. And then with a wet brush on those white bands of bare white primer I put uh, put water which bled out and joined the colors together and it's worked quite well um, the only thing the green I used is the same green on the light part of the dinosaur so uh, I wish I hadn't used the same green but it, it's quite nice I wanted something a bit different on such a large feather uh, the other feathers you can see I'm just basing them at the moment and uh, and I'm going to be um, changing the colours around, like here um, on this one. The, the red is pretty much the same, but uh, I've washed the yellow with another orangey colour. And I've got two shades of purple on that one. Uh, red gems for up on the top and around his collar. All right. Very soon now I'm going to split him apart and and, uh, and glue him onto the dinosaur. What I've decided with the uh, the axe thing is that looks like a bird's head to me. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm 
building up the whites in that and I'm going to paint that little that little square in the middle with black so it's like a pupil of an eye and then gloss it right because that looks to me like a, a dipping bird to me all right so nearly done shield's nearly done I've put one feather on I don't want anything blue because of the turquoise in the middle of his shield so I've got to decide on a new color for that um, and yet then head wise again just blocking in colors at the moment and you can see I've started putting on a secondary color I don't want them just one color all right so <clears throat> next step is stick the fella on his mount and uh, well I don't know I, that, that there might be one more stage or I might come back when I'm done let's see all right and there he is done um, I forgot to say before I was a bit too vigorous with the dry brushing and I actually dry brushed his uh, little lip ornament off so there we go he's all finished um, I think it's a good start to my dinosaur army I know green is kind of like conventional for a dinosaur but this is my uh, introductory one so um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm glad on the color choices that I've done I think I'm tied in now uh, for what to do um, with skins for the you know for the uh, fellas um, every dinosaur is going to have a different color scheme so this is going to be my only green one I think at the moment um, I think also I went all gold for all of his uh, body armor and I think that's a bit much. It's all right for him, he's a real Mr. Fancy Pants, but I think regular troops and that, um, I'm gonna do what I did with my um, uh, Slanesh army, which is uh, have my troops um, in what I've done on his throne, throne, his little uh, saddle thing, uh, <coughs> excuse me, which is, uh, um, uh, black metallic black all right so there we go uh that's him done um on to the next one which has arrived um uh, my sister very uh generously bought me uh lord croak so um as i film this i've just started snipping uh the sprue on that fella so uh stay tuned if you're a seraphon fan um yeah i'll be back at some point with uh, with the good lord.